everyone. Welcome to some questions on bond enthalpy. So we've got our information for this question here. And the first part of it is saying what is meant by the term average bond enthalpy. So here we have a question that is asking us for a definition. And if we know our definitions, then these are nice and easy questions. Again, you've got about eight to 10% of your marks would come from definitions. So you need to make sure that you know them. If not, you need to go away and make sure you get those looked over, commit to memory. So for this question here, this definition, we need to say that the average enthalpy change or enthalpy is when one mole of bonds is broken. I begin the of cases covalent bonds. If it's in brackets, you wouldn't actually need to have, but if you have that information in there, then it will be all good. So starting things off with a definition, like I say, easy if you know what the definitions are. Now, diving into the actual calculation itself. We have the equation at the top, along with the overall enthalpy change. Now, the question is asked us for carbon monoxides bond enthalpy. So you see that's been that's been omitted from the information in the table. So we have to try and work that out. So it's going to be a slightly different working, ever so slightly, nothing crazy, but just some ever so slightly different just to make sure you're keeping yourself on your toes and you know what you're doing. So we need to set things out as we normally would do. So we're going to break it down into stages. So the first thing to do is to work out the enthalpy for the bonds broken. So that's going to be our reactants. So we're going to work those out first. So we can see here that we're going to have, uh, for methane, we have C to H bonds of 413. We have four of those, so that's we've got the four times 413. Plus, now for a water molecule, we have O to H bonds in there, which are 464. And we have two lots of them, so we're going to times them up by two. So that's where that information has come from there. We work out those brackets, and that's what we get for our bonds broken for our reactants. Now we're going to then work out what we can for the products, because we, like I say, we have to work out what the carbon monoxide one is. So we have H2. So H to H bond is 436, and we have three lots of them, so we're going to work out what that is there. So, now this is what you would normally do, but you'd have the other product in there, or you'd have all the information, you've got to then work out what it is overall. But this time, they already told you what it is overall of 210. So that's why they've given you that inf bit of information there at the top. They've already given you what you're aiming for. You've then just got to make sure you get yourself there and fill in, the, fill in the blank, as it were. So when we try and set this up, if we then do what we normally would do, we take the reactants minus the value for the products. This leaves us with 1, 2, 7, 2. So what this is telling us that if we have our value, our bond enthalpy value for carbon monoxide, so just a C to an O, if we then add on... 210 we should then get to that final value so very simply to then make the co the subject take the two tens either side to minus it off and we get 1062 kilojoules per mole now if you want to do a check and actually make sure that's the correct value then go and then add it on to your bonds formed and then do react the minus product and you'll find you get 210 so if you want to do that as a final check, that's probably a good thing to do. Okay, and the final question we have here. Again, we've got an equation. We've got a table with some values in it. And we're asked what's the bond enthalpy value in kilojoules per mole of the HI bond. Again, we've got some values. But again, it's only worth one mark, yes. But we're still going to have to do some calculations. So we're going to have to work it out. We're not just going to simply know just by looking at it. So even though it is only a mark, you're looking at roughly a minute per mark. Hopefully you might have some time to spare if you've got to add in these calculations or try and get it done as quickly as you can. That's what you need to be able to do. So, if we have our reactants on our left-hand side, we have H2, which is the H to H bond, so that's 436, plus the iodine that's in there, so an I to I bond, 151. Add those together, we get 587. That's the first thing we've got to do. Can't do anything else really other than that. 
Now, what this is then saying is if we're going to work it out as we would normally, we'd take the reactants and we'd minus away the products and that would give us the overall value, which is up here at the top, which is minus 9. But we don't actually have that value, so that's why I put it as x in there, because that's the unknown. Now, the reason why it's 2x is because I have two lots of them. That's why they give me that equation there to use. So we have two lots. We have two h to i bonds. We have to find the value of one of those. So that's what the equation would be, but that's not in a great situation at the minute, not a great format for us. So we're going to simply do some rearrangement. We'll take the 2x to the other side and the minus 9 to that other side. We get that value there. Now, this is why it's important to make sure you have 2x, because people will simply go, oh, yeah, so the, the answer is 596, therefore the answer is D. But it's not, because that's what two of those values are. You don't put in the table at the top what two of the bonds are with the one end of the value. You just have what one of them is. So that's why we've got to divide it by two, and we get 298, which gives us C. So just make sure, if you have a question like that, just check the numbers in front of the speeches that you're looking at to make sure if there's only if there's one lot of them or two lots or whatever it might be. Okay, that will do us for today on questions with bond enthalpy. See you next time.